Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. St. Lucia is among small island states pressing for action at the UN Climate Summit. Students get involved in controlling the rodent population on island. And a look at how the recently launched iGUIDE project will affect the ease of doing business. St. Lucia and the rest of CARICOM states is participating in the United Nations Climate Summit in Poland through December 14. It is arguably the most important event on climate negotiations since 2015 when the Paris Agreement was drafted. The Poland Climate Summit is being held only a few weeks after the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change published a special report with an unambiguous message about the urgent changes that need to be made during the next decade. The goal is to contain global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by reducing the use of fossil fuels. Don Pierre Nathaniel is St. Lucia's Deputy Chief Sustainable Development and Environment Officer. It, it clearly articulates that 1.5 is very much feasible and it gives actions with regard to renewable energy, the phasing out of coal, interventions in the transport sector, etc. So indeed, it is saying that 1.5 is feasible and that is very important for us. But on the other hand, it also gives a very sad story that we are so far away from where we need to be. We are at a tra on a trajectory towards three to four degrees of warming and we also realized that according to the IPCC report that by 2030, between 2032 and 2050, we could actually reach 1.5. That would be very unfortunate for our small island developing states, our livelihoods, our people, our very survival. Ongoing meetings over the next two weeks at the COP24 will be fundamental for countries around the world to really show their compromise to get the ball rolling on what they committed to in Paris three years ago. The Boys Training Center is now better able to provide quality oral health services to its children. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The oral health of young boys at the Boys Training Center is expected to be improved as the Rotary Club of Grosley recently handed over a replacement of portable dental equipment to the institution. Minister for Health and Wellness, the Honorable Mary Isaac, says she is delighted that the Rotary Club of Grosley is committed to investing in the health of our nation's children. The newly donated equipment is an upgrade to the mobile dental program and it has made it possible to resume operations right here at the Boys Training Center. Once the program is completed here, other schools in the constituency, including the new transit home, will be approached to receive care as well. So what you are getting here is a very important gift. Representative of the Rotary Club of Grosley, Matthew Render, says his organization is dedicated to making positive changes in the community and supporting the mobile dental program. The mobile dental program was launched in 2005 to provide free dental screening to primary school children throughout the north of St. Lucia. The program is operated by the Department of Health and Wellness, whose staff visit the various schools on a weekly basis to educate students on basic oral hygiene and administer a quick checkup, including assessment, cleaning, fluoride application, fillings and extractions. The cost of administering the screenings is covered by the Rotary Club of Groselé to the tune of around $10,000 a year. Manager of the Boys Training Center, Wang Sonson, thanked the Rotary Club of Grizzly for its contribution to the well-being of the boys. With your generous contribution to the center, I'm hoping that our boys will feel more confident because they will have proper dental care at their disposal. I know it's expensive. Um, dental care is very expensive and for our boys to have it for free. I think that that's all we could ask for for Christmas. The portable dental equipment was replaced at a cost of US $9,000. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Phenol Neptune. 
The recently launched Investment Guide or iGuide project, according to Caribbean Association of Investment Promotion Agencies, Kuiper's Senior Advisor for Investment Promotion, Suzette Hudson, could have a significant impact on the country's ease of doing business ranking. She indicated that the notable jumps or falls in countries' ease of doing business ranking is indicative of the many policy reforms related to investment issues being undertaken by the various countries. Hudson highlighted the consequences if appropriate steps are not taken. Now, if our countries do not make the changes needed to ensure that investors are not turned away or they're not um, disenfranchised or they're not frustrated, you know, then, then we will find that we will continue to fall in the ranking and we'll also continue to fall in terms of our investment. Yeah. Um, we believe that this particular project will help us because it will provide the information that investors need and that's all investors really need they want to know how do i start a business how do i get my construction permit how do i get my licenses what are the processes for approvals how long will it take to get stuff done how much will it cost me all of that goes into their final decision making if we can present that information to them easily instead of them having to go and search for it then it puts us at, at, at an advantage with the implementation of the iGUIDE, officials are hoping for the creation of transparency and ease of access to information, all of which are expected to increase investments. United Nations Conference on Trade and Development Economist Ian Richards explained the benefits other countries have attained following the implementation of the iGUIDE. Um, there's two things that, we, that comes out of this. One is in terms of how um, improves investment flows. That very much depends on the investment agencies and the efforts they're doing, because this, in a way, is one communication tool that they have at their disposal to put in their investment promotion strategy. So if they're making a lot of efforts to attract investors, this can be a definite help for them. And that's the kind of feedback from those who have been very active on this. They very much appreciate, appreciated the guide in terms of the information it provides and their ability to update the information as well. The other part of this is also allowing the investment agency to position itself very centrally with regards to other government departments and to understand and map out the whole experience for investors. And we found the feedback we have from investment agencies is this is a useful way to do that. Richards explained that often each ministry or agency involved in investment and investment promotion see things from its perspective and not that of the investors. By providing this information in one central location, the iGUIDE will be bridging this crucial gap, allowing for a free flow of information. This is Nation Beat. Coming up, students get involved in controlling the rodent population on the island. Welcome back. A sitting of the House of Assembly is scheduled for Tuesday, December 11, 2018, with papers to be laid by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, the Honorable Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, and the Honorable Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. Parliamentary approval will be sought for the Minister of Finance to borrow the sum of EC $32,400,000 from the Bank of St. Lucia Limited for the purpose of financing the 2018-2019 budget, as well as guarantee a loan in the sum of $100 million US dollars from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority for the purpose of financing the Hiranora International Airport redevelopment project. Authorization is also being sought for the sum of US $50 million to be borrowed from the Export-Import Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for the purpose of financing the road improvement and maintenance program, the infrastructure repairs to schools, and the housing development program. Tuesday's sitting is scheduled to commence at 10 a.m. The sitting of the Senate is scheduled for Thursday, December 20, 2018, at 10 a.m. 
Students around the island were guaranteed the opportunity to tap into their creativity and become involved in efforts at controlling the rodent population in St. Lucia. The Environmental Health Division in the Department of Health and Wellness recently hosted a rat trap competition allowing students to make cost-effective and innovative rodent control mechanisms. The competition was aimed at raising awareness on leptospirosis and providing students with the opportunity to play a part in reducing the impact of rodents on the population. Environmental Health Officer Charlotte Charles says she's very pleased with the level of student participation and also parent and teacher involvement in this activity. The number of traps we saw submitted, like I said, we had over 44 traps submitted. To me, it was a true testi testament of not, how, of not only how creative and innovative our students are, but it also showed the dedication of parents and teachers. From the crafting and construction of the traps, we could see that parents helped their students. During the judging process, we heard a lot of, my mommy helped me, my daddy screwed in the screws. My sister helped me. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks Jim says it is important that students are knowledgeable about the signs and symptoms of leptospirosis. Sometimes it may look like a simple flu or viral illness, um, the headache, the back in, um, muscle aches, but it can also progress with high fever. The urine can change color and get very dark or very bright yellow, or bright orange. The eyes can change and get yellow. And we know that if it's not treated, it can actually have fatal consequences. But we want everyone to know and children remember that leptospirosis can be treated. It can be treated, it can be cured. So if you or anybody around, you may observe your family members, if anybody has those signs and they're home taking their little medication, etc., they're not getting better, encourage them to go to the health and practitioner where they can get an antibiotic to cure them and prevent them from um, getting worse with this disease. Joshua Rennie of the Odd Combined School took first place in the rat trap competition, while Vianney Plum of the Dame Pellet Lazy Primary School came in second. Third place went to Antonio Philip of the Dame Pellet Lazy Primary School. The innovative and creative rat trap award went to Tanisha Jules of the Canon Laurie Anglican Primary School. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Funa Neptune. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time on NTN at 7.30 p.m. with a repeat at 7.30 a.m. and on this station as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.